All right, for the blessings, we are back with another video. All right, before we begin, a couple quick announcements. Um, if you are interested in signing up for classes, uh, the way to do that is to go to the official Primordial Chaos Patreon page located at patreon.com forward slash Beniti B-A-N-I-T-I -I, that's patreon.com forward slash Beniti B-A-N-I-T-I -I, and tier 3 is the tier you want to join uh, tier 3 gives you access to the 3 private classes I do every month on Patreon for Patreon members only in addition to the group ritual we do uh, together at the end of the month um, also keep in mind when you join It doesn't just give you access to the classes Moving forward from the day you sign up and join You also get access to all of the material uh, That's archived uh, on that tier So you're getting all the content In addition to the content moving forward And that content includes a large uh, Extensive amount of classes On various ongoing series That I have going on right now Such as uh, Luciferian magic and self mastery, Clopathic sorcery, uh, Sith dark side alchemy and philosophy class. Um, I just added a new class, ongoing series, necromancy and dark witchcraft. Uh, we have shadow work class, 18 deep and counting, um, esoteric occult Bible study class, ancient Egyptian vampiric class, Kundalini meditation and awakening. The list goes on and on. So if you're really looking to take, you know, your spiritual path up to that next level, that next phase, and you want to really upstep your game, uh, that's the way to go. That's the route. That's what you want to do. You want to take it up uh, to that notch. Um, I'm sure you can find an ongoing series or a class uh, that will definitely work out for you or, or multiple classes. But I just want to make that clear because people always ask that question. Um get access to everything in the archive also if you're interested in signing up for the sixth annual journey of the black adept conference uh, that's in full effect october 19th to october 22nd here in hollywood florida at cultural expressions uh it'll be uh, a three-day event of classes workshops now this year we've now just to put out there we, we, we we're going to go a little bit of a different route this year so we now almost have finalized uh, the itinerary We have limited some of just the speaking presentations There's going to be more ritual work In addition to the two main ritual workings We do on Friday and Saturday night There's going to be some more hands-on ritual work We got a drumming healing ceremony We're going to be doing That's going to be part of one of the day's presentations And workshops And uh, we're going to do a cemetery working uh, This year uh, We've done something out at the beach The last two years But we're going to change that up this year so we've got a, a, a necromancy ritual plan for the cemetery on night number two. Uh, so it's almost, we, we're just putting together the timeline and sequence. Uh, but yes, yeah, so it's, it's shaping up. We pretty much got that itinerary in order. So if you're looking to attend in person or you want to attend virtually, which gives you access to the classes, <coughs> excuse me, and the uh, workshops and the presentations, uh, shoot me an email, khnum19 at gmail.com, and I will send you information uh, on how to sign up and register for the conference, all right? Uh, also, if you're interested in a spiritual reading or a spiritual consultation, shoot me an email, khnum19 at gmail.com. I will send you information on how to sign up for a reading or a consultation, okay? And that... Uh, or for various different kinds of readings, uh, Clopathic demonic readings, uh, Santa Muerte readings, Egyptian oracle readings, shadow work readings, uh, which is something uh, always a good thing to do, especially if you're looking for a specific direction you should be heading in. If you're trying to identify what kind of ritual work should I be doing, this, that, and the other, that's a great reading to do. Deity readings, which uh, to see what spirits, demons, gods, and goddesses walk with you. Uh, but shoot me an email and I will send you information on how to sign up for a spiritual reading or a spiritual consultation. All right. Uh, also, keep in mind, 
All this new content is being uploaded to the uh, Primordial Chaos Podcast, which is available on Spotify and all major podcast platforms. Don't forget to check us out on Instagram, Primordial Chaos 9, all one word. Uh, Primordial Chaos, two words on Facebook, where I also upload this new content. Also, uh, spoke with Brother Tajo, who does with me. He actually uh, produces and puts together the Hip Hop Occult Show. Uh, we're putting that, that show together right now, the next episode. Uh, looking to do that either late this month or very early next month. So we're putting together some stuff. So I know some people have asked about that. We try to stay as consistent as we can with that. We probably need to do a little bit of a better job, but sometimes so much shit going on. We just can't get to everything. But we are working on the next episode of the Hip Hop Occult Show. Uh, so for all you hip hop heads... Slash Occultus, uh, that's coming soon, okay? So look for that. Uh, and that's about it for the announcements. Uh, I will, at some point this week, it could even be tonight, I'm not sure, I will get on there and do a live so I can interact with some of you guys. It's been a couple of weeks, it's just a lot going on right now. I've got the conference, a little man is uh, playing an extensive amount of travel games, so I'm traveling, I'm back and forth. Uh, it's a lot going on. But anyway, we're going to make it work. We're going to make it work. That's how we do. All right. Uh, that pretty much, that's the announcements. So what I want to talk about, you see the title, The Adversarial Current and the Masks of Lucifer. Let's talk about that. Okay. What is the adversarial current? Right. You know, what is that? We hear this term. <clears throat> But there's, there, there, there's different perspectives on it. We hear, this is a title and an attribute that you hear affiliated or given to the title we know as Satan or Satan, right? We need to be clear that these are titles. They do mean something, but there's a, I think a little bit of a confusion the adversarial current as a whole and the masks of Lucifer encompass many different aspects that people need to be very clear and aware of. So we hear the word adversarial, which is connected, obviously, the roots of these words are connected to the word adverse, right? Which means in opposition to something. So Satan, I hear all these really bad definitions, mostly by religious ignorant people who create their own definitions from wherever the hell they get them in reference to what the word Satan means is completely incorrect. It just means the adversary. Okay? Look it up. When you see it in the Bible, it's, a, it's an attribute or a title that was not exclusive to this character on a pitchfork with a pitchfork on a hot sauce bottle that mythologic or people who created mythology created, right? It described something. Now, you might be surprised, even, you know, your Bible thumpers and your religious people, the word Satan was attributed to regular people in the Bible. Anytime the word adverse came up or adversarial adversity, that was the word you would see there. Okay? So it's a title. So the reason why we call one of the titles of the adversary is Satan, because that's what it means. Now, Lucifer, when we break it down in its origins and etymology from the Greek into the Latin on down means light bearer, right? This is why you find in your, and again, I make reference to the Bible because the Bible is not what people think it is. When you look at the Bible from a more esoterical and occult perspective, you see it completely different. And that's how we, I hate this thing when it gets jammed. That's how we uh, study it and approach it as being on the path of self-mastery. Because the Bible really is an occult book. It's just people have <laughs> watered down and dumbed down the true esoterical and occult meanings. People have literalized a lot of the stories in there and the characters in there. But that's a conversation for another time. But the bright and morning star attribute 
is given to this character Jesus and it's given to Lucifer. In Lucifer in Isaiah 14 verse 12 and Jesus in Revelations 22 verse 16. Okay? Titles. I'm just I'm giving you an examples to show how people took attributes and titles and how they literalized these characters and then created a whole mythology around it. So if you hear me talking on videos and you think this biblical mythological character that Christianity and religion has created of this character called Satan or the devil is what I'm talking about, then you're completely confused. Okay? Completely confused. Okay. The adversarial incurred encompasses and involves multiple different aspects. You have different masks of Lucifer that come in many different forms. Azazel, the fallen one, which represents our descent in order to ascend, which is metaphorical. And when I say that, when you're reading this story, how they took that, and then they put it in the story of Lucifer being cast out of the heavens and cast down to the earth. Right, I've always referred to that over years as representing your descent was the beginning of your ascent. Because what that really means when you when you read the story of Iblis, <coughs> Shaitan, Lucifer, the different titles again, you see an individual that they refer to, Iblis or the rebellious one, again, describing an attribute, it's a title, and usually these titles describe a certain action that took place. So Iblis, when you read the Quran, is given that title because he refused to make obeisance, sense, as it says in the story, to this being Adam that was created because he felt he was created of fire and this individual was created of mere clay, mud, or dirt. So his refusal to bow down is why we get the title Iblis. And we hear the word rebelliousness or rebel automatically due to our religious programming, we think this is some evil atrocity that took place. No. What this is trying to show you, and the Yazidis take, I always bring that up, the Yazidis and Algier with the Black Book, they always take the other approach that this was a test. A test in the sense that you should never willingly for no purpose at all surrender your divinity to somebody else so as it, as this story is told to us in religion that this was a very disagreeable or evil thing for this individual to do the Yazidis have it they teach it reversed okay that Iblis was supposed to refuse to bow down it was a test to see if he embraced his divinity or he took the adverse approach to what was expected. So this made him or this story fall in line with what we call the adversarial current. So let me review and I'm just using stories and metaphors so you can understand what the adversarial current represents. I'm not going to get into the literalness, literalness of it because as we know over time these concepts, these stories, these things were grafted, changed, passed down but the significance, the meaning, and the understanding of them, to you as a practitioner, remember, it's about applying them to your path and how you can grow from this, okay? So when we look at what the adversarial current embodies, rebelliousness, nonconformity, the isolated consciousness in this, in this of the mask of the adversary of Set or Satuk, Right, we see we see one of the key things is to embrace our uniqueness, to understand <coughs> you should never ever lose the individual self and what they're trying to get you to understand as the collective consciousness. Because we know a lot of lighter right hand path philosophies promote this, we're all connected. You know, everything is connected. It's all love, peace, and unity, right? And then we all need to come together. You know, the, the, the old, you know, running through the grass fields, butt naked, singing Kumbaya, and everybody's going to hold hands, and the world's going to be all peace, love, rainbows, and sunshines, right? 
That's the pipe dream they've been selling for years through many different streams and outlets, platforms, and religions. And it's just not fucking true. If you don't believe it, to show you the very religion they tried to sell and promote to you at the filming of this video currently going on right now. So when this video ages, uh, here we are on the 9th day of October, 2023. Here we have chaos again breaking out in the region of the Middle East, in the Gaza Strip and Israel, between Palestine and Israel. Okay, a conflict that's been going on since the 40s. Okay? And the deep thing about it is the God of confusion, not set. Their God of just pure confusion, their, their, their monotheistic biblical God, their biblical Torah God, their Quran or Quranic God promotes death and destruction and the killing of innocent men, women, and children, warring over lands technically that don't belong to neither side. That's a whole nother story. I ain't going to get into that. But all think they're doing it in the name of their God, their religion, and their beliefs. Because that's what the war is over. It's over the, the sacred mosque in Jerusalem. All, you know, the whole, the, those whole region and holy lands there. The Palestinian people feel like they have a right to it. The Israeli people say, no, that's theirs, the sacred. Look, I'm not going to get into that debate. You guys, you guys sort that out. I'm bringing it out to show you the same God of Islam, Christianity, and Judaism, who they all promote as a peace-loving God. Follow this religion. This is the right way. Whether it's Islam, Judaism, or Christian, whatever, we see that that God is a God of death, destruction, and turmoil, and, and, and this religion condones this shit. If this is what their religion leads them to do, who in the world would want to be a part of that? It's funny how a lot of here in the West, people who are very egotistical and proud, arrogant Christians or, and I'm not talking all because there's some, look, I know I have many, many uh, uh, Christian Muslims and Jew, I'm, I'm talking about the fanatics who sit there and judge and condemn other spiritual systems, okay, who do this regularly and want to judge people and have the audacity to say, let's just say per se, what we do is evil, right? And their definition of evil or what somebody who might practice uh, uh, a spiritual path of Wudon or something else or this, that, and the other, <coughs> that's very hypocritical. When a lot of the things you accuse other spiritual paths of, your God is a bloodthirsty warmonger. He loves death. He loves destruction. He loves violence. He loves blood. He loves the slaying of innocent men, women, and children. Because if this is what you, if this is what these religions lead to, why doesn't their God put a stop to this shit rather than allow it and condone it? So this is why we take the adversarial path. We go the other route because we do not embrace the God of sickness, death confusion and idiocy point blank so I'm trying to give you the real meaning of what the adversarial current is we go we going adverse or adversarial to everything that they've promoted to us as being the norm that's why when one embraces an adversarial current or path they've said I've had enough of that shit I don't want to belong to a religion and a God of death. A God that promises me pie in the sky later. That that subliminally promotes poverty and struggling as some badge of honor. That there's some great reward waiting later for me in the afterlife. Fuck that. No. Because a lot of your successful, wealthy people worldwide, they don't embrace that culture of death. Because that's what it is. It's a culture of death. Not just physical death. Mental death. Physical death. Spiritual death. And it's all fueled by a disease called ignorance. Point blank. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. Okay? So we have chosen to embrace an adversarial path or spiritual current. That's totally the opposite from it. 
we have also come to the realization and found out everything they told us to stay away from that was wrong, that was evil, that was wicked, that we should not, you know, explore or look into was where the truth was being buried. Okay? The masks of the adversary are current. The many masks of, in the form of Lucifer, Satan, Satuk, Set, Azazel, is not what people think it is. They, everybody that doesn't know about it is so spooked out and so indoctrinated with fear from all of the bullshit they've been programmed with. Okay? When you're embracing the adversarial current, you are opening yourself up. You're opening your psyche and you're opening yourself up to be receptive to much higher states of awareness and consciousness. You are tapping into your spiritual faculties that they have intentionally suppressed since day one, since, since you walked out of the womb of your mother. They don't want you to sharpen your psychic abilities, your clairvoyant abilities, your telepathy, your psychometry, all of those natural things as we as living, intelligent, thinking, spiritual beings, divine beings have, they want you to suppress that. No, throw it out of the way. Get into this man worship religion. Let's keep them in a box, keep them congregating in buildings, getting on their knees, praying to some spook mythological God in the sky that you believe is coming one day to save you. Keep teaching you to look for divinity outside of yourself. Where somebody on the path of the adversarial current looks within for that divinity. Okay? Because we've come to the realization that this lie they keep telling us and just keep changing it up when it's convenient. See, you're dealing with you're dealing with a system that when somebody makes the rules but also has the ability to change the rules as the game changes, yeah, you're in a no-win situation. Okay? You're in a no-win win situation. <coughs> so we're not embracing that anymore. Okay? And if you're on this path, it's all further confirmation that you need to release all that and let it go. And not hold on to any of them old paradigms, any of them old ways. Because they suit you no purpose anymore. Now, it's not easy working with the adversarial current and the masks of Lucifer. Okay? Because you're going to go through a lot of changes. You're going to experience power that you've never experienced before. You're going to start to unlock aspects of yourself that you had no awareness was there. And that's good and bad. You're going to see that you've had some power and strength you just were unaware of, but you're also going, going to struggle with embracing a lot of your weaknesses, shortcomings, and some issues you got. Okay? Because to walk this path of the adversarial current, occurring is to also wholeheartedly prepare yourself to embrace the fact that you're willing to go through these changes. You're willing to put in the work to, to master yourself on all levels of what I call in the five points of the pentagram, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, and financially. And there's some, there's some tough, there's gray areas in there, yes, that are tough. Okay? That first one always needs to be your priority. You should always be growing in wisdom and knowledge, especially knowledge of self. Right? It's that old hermetic saying, know thyself and thou shalt know the gods. So if you don't know yourself, good and bad aspect, not just this, again, not just the shit you like. If you don't really know yourself, what good is it trying to connect with spirits? gods, goddesses, demons, and unlock the dark side, the void, and the abyss. 
that primordial chaotic energy where all things emerge from, taking it back to the essence if you don't even know yourself. See, being on the adversarial path or working with the adversarial current is also embracing the fact that you are removing the illusionary veil that you have created knowingly and unknowingly. The unknowingly part is what you've been indoctrinated with because the programming is deep. It goes back generations. But the knowingly part, the shit that you've knowingly embraced, you know, shit about yourself, you know, how you try to portray yourself or you've taken on a persona or an image or this, that, and the other, all of that shit needs to be obliterated. Because the reality is, regardless of what illusionary veils you have placed over yourself, as time goes on and evolves and expands, you will evolve into what you are naturally anyway. So you could pretend to be this or that or, or, or create this persona or image about yourself, how you want to project and everybody to see you, that shit is irrelevant. <coughs> because who you really are will always win first. And it'll come out at some point. The facade and the game eventually will crack and the real you will emerge. But the question is, are you ready to stand there and embrace? Can you take and absorb everything you see when the real you manifests. And when you see the real you, there's gonna be things that bring joy and happiness, but there's gonna be things that bring sadness, pain, anguish, frustration, okay? Because now you're really going into the real essence in the sense of who you really are, but not who you really, who you think you are, right? Let's, let's just be real. We all grow up being by so many different influences, whether it's cultural influences, family being raised a certain way, pressured to embrace things a certain way. Like for an example, let's just look right here uh, in the United States of America. It's, it's these basic things that the average person growing up in the West is kind of, for the most part, spoon fed from day one, you know? Be raised in a, in a in a good household, go to school, graduate high school, go to college, get a degree, find a good job, get married, have kids, the picket fence, the dog running in the yard, the boy and the girl, the whole nine. All of that systematic programming, right? This is this is how we are programmed from day one, from a very small individual, to how we're supposed to. For the most part, that's the outline for the average person here in the West, the average person here in America. That's how they're supposed to structure their life. Okay? And that just doesn't apply to everybody. That's not everybody's dreams and aspirations. That's not everybody's dreams and aspirations. Okay? That's not everybody's goal. But if you don't follow the norm, for the most part, you are ostracized and criticized. Right? <clears throat> but that's not everybody's goal. Everybody doesn't want that in life. Okay? And some people, though, who are, or who are pressured and raised a certain way, kind of feel, you know, like their back is against the wall, that if they go against the grain or go against that, you know, they're going to be the aforementioned things. You have to be willing, in order to be on an adversarial path or an adversarial current, you have to be willing to abandon all that shit. In order to be a, 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 on a path of self-mastery and a god or ruler over your destiny and the path, your spiritual sovereignty, you have to be willing to fucking let all that go. You, don't, you shouldn't give two fucks about any of that. Okay? You're supposed to lay your life path out Make the choices that's going to work for you and not feel like any outside influences are affecting that. It sounds easy, but it's really not as easy as it, as it may sound. Again, adversarial, adverse. Adverse to the norm. There's a connection to nonconformity there. To be a conformist or to conform is to, again, we're all pressured 
to be conformists. We're all pressured to accept, or they tried to pressure everybody to accept what mainstream, excuse me, says or accepts is legit. Okay? And that's just not how it is all the time. And it shouldn't be. You should make the decisions of what you accept and what you reject. Which falls in line with the concept we as gods and goddesses are constantly building and destroying with, within to create what we're calling the without. Because what's going on inside is what's reflecting what's going on in your quote unquote outer world. It's real simple. Okay? How you feel in here too plays a large part of that. Okay? But that, that, that goes into layers too. That deals with many other different avenues and obstacles. But again, without, without you know, jumping all over the place and trying to keep these short tutorials within alignment, the main thing is to be on the adversarial path, okay? To deal with the adversarial current. These are some of the things you must understand and embrace in order to make those changes. Okay, it's that simple. That's it. That's what this path is about. We do not embrace a culture of death, a culture of confusion, because that's that's what they've been trying to spoon feed and jam down our throats now for years. So the question is, are you truly on an adversarial path? I'll leave you that up to you to answer that question. All right. Having said that, uh, I'm going to stop and end this video at that point right there. Again, if you need to reach out to me for a spiritual consultation or a reading, shoot me an email at khnum19 at gmail.com and I will send you information on how to do that. If you are interested in signing up for the 6th Annual Journey of the Black Adept Conference here in Hollywood, Florida... October 19th to the 22nd, feel free to reach out, send me an email, and I will send you information on how to sign up and attend that either virtually or live and in person, okay? Uh, also, keep in mind, all of this new content is being uploaded to the Primordial Chaos podcast, the direct link to the podcast along with the social media pages on Instagram and Facebook along with my contact email address and the direct link to the Primordial Chaos Patreon page where you go to sign up for classes that I do which is three every month privately for Patreon members only. All of those links are right in the description box of the video you are watching right now. All right. That's going to wrap it up for me for this video. Uh, I was a little busy. Again, traveling the last few days. I'm going to get some, some videos up this week. Uh, this being video one, there'll be some more to come. All right. Infernal blessings. And uh, we will talk soon.